Hi guys, Andy here. Quite often I get asked about the apps that I use on my device. This video particularly is about some of the kind of day-to-day uh, -day essential apps. So it's not fun gaming apps, it's not the some of the cool apps, it's not some of the social apps, it's kind of what I use to get through each day I suppose in some ways. I've dropped them all into a, a folder here. Um, I'm going to start off with Dock Clock. Now this is set actually to automatically turn on when I put the uh, phone on charge after 10 o'clock at night. Now for this first one I'm going to have to turn the light off and you're going to have to look very carefully. There, you see that time? 19.51. I touch and it lights up properly. Now I've not set a weather location. I'm not massively bothered by weather showing up. Let me turn, the, uh, turn my light back on. I think if I hold down, how do I get? I can't actually remember. I'll get into the into the settings on it. To be honest, I thought I just hold down on the screen. There we go. Um, so activate after ten o'clock at night. Fine. Auto rotate. So there's a few different bits and pieces you can do in there. So weather settings. I should really. I should have. But I've, I'm like I say. I'm not. But I can just type in a location. So I use that at night instead. I don't bother using a an alarm clock anymore. Um, I literally just drop my phone onto the wireless charger, bloop, and the, and the, it's really. I mean, it, it possibly only really works on AMOLED screens. Um, I've tried it with a phone that had an LCD, and it's because even a black kind of slightly glows. It doesn't particularly work, but on AMOLED screens, great. It doesn't light the room up at all. So I love it. The next we've got eWallet. Now. We're a little limited of what I can show you because obviously it's got some quite sensitive stuff in here. It's all highly encrypted. Um, it syncs to the cloud and back to my computer. Again, encrypted. Um, for example, well, I suppose no harm. So you can see the different credit cards, including sort of debit cards. I can tap them, I can get my details. So if I need to out and about, use it less and less, but you never know, there are some times when it's just easier to, rather than go and find my wallet, I just open it up on my computer on on my phone. Sometimes it's a PIN number on a, on a credit card I haven't used for a long, long time um, and I need to double check. But you can put, you know, almost anything in here. So auto cards like the AA can just charge, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, store account, travel cards, you know, sort of passport info is kept on there. It's just easy. I find it's easier. I can access it without having to worry um, about digging things out of a cupboard somewhere. Now, when I said these are essential day-to-day -day apps, granted, I don't use eWallet every day. I'll probably use it more on my computer than on my phone. So if I go to a website and it wants me to put credit card details in, rather than going getting out of my seat and going, well, what I open a big wallet. Um, it is a paid app. It was a I think it was about seven pounds, but I can't be sure. And you probably have to pay to if you want to install it on your computer as well. I think it was as much as twenty. So it is quite an expensive app, but um, I, I make good use of it. LastPass, you probably all know about LastPass. I do like the ones that let me use my fingerprint for security. Uh, basically, again, LastPass, you can install on your computer and on your phone, and it just helps you remember passwords and login details. Now, I've wiped Instagram. It's always a, I don't know why I use Instagram. The chances of when it loads a picture, it's either going to be a motorbike or a girl, most likely. Probably scan to the cloud. Anyway, we'll try our chances. I'm going to tap in the password field. And straight away, the matching logins. There's a few different ones. It's got Twitter as well, but it's the one, obviously, I think it's that one. It fills both of bits of detail in. And it's a motorbike. Yay. <laughs> oh, underneath American football. So we're quite safe. American football. Look at that. Well, let's, should we, should we, we're still safe. Look at that. How safe is this? Ah, there we go. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so there we go. That's uh, that's LastPass. Re to me, really essential. Ideally, you want to be changing your passwords for different websites. So if you do lose one or one of them gets hacked, they're not into everything. And LastPass is ideal for being able to do that because you can use a proper, like, funky encrypted password that you're never going to remember, but you don't need to because LastPass saves it for you. Then we have Llama. This is uh, you may have heard about it. It's an automation system, really. So you program in, for example, different areas. So it, you can tell it to learn an area, start learning area, the next 30 seconds. It already knows the area, but if it didn't, it would it would learn what um, cell towers are nearby, and it would know, therefore, that I'm at home. You can set up different events. So basically, when I'm at home, enable Wi-Fi. Simple as that. 
up on a leaving home, disable Wi-Fi. And honestly, that's the main reason I use this. But you can set up, and to be honest, I'm not going to go through it all now, add conditions, add actions, test the actions. You can set up all kind of, uh, all kind of things based on lots of, so battery level, you can have it turn Wi-Fi off at a certain battery level, for example, or when it connects to a certain Bluetooth device to turn the volume up, or, you know, there's all kind of things that you can make it do. And I, I really don't make... Uh, the, the most use of it that I should, but I do like it just for not to run to turn my Wi-Fi off, basically. <laughs> it's just a simple level. So that's uh, that's Llama. I would encourage you to have a look. A lot of these apps, I have done other videos. If you want to check, search the video name in my channel. Hopefully you'll find a review. I think of most of them, maybe not Dot Clock. Uh, anyway. Then, regularly, love this app. I won't lie, I've edited out, I've deleted away some of the, uh, some of the ones that probably a lot of people say, what do you need a reminder for, for that, you idiot? I mean, even I suppose you could say change bedding, but I don't want to wait. <laughs> I don't want to wait till my bedding smells. I'd rather just know that I'm going to get reminded every oh, 30 days in this instant uh, to change my bedding and wash it, um, or cut my hair again. Well, I just wait till it's too long and then cut it. Well, actually, because it didn't feel too long, the minute but I realised, oh wow, it's been that long since I've cut my hair. I need to start thinking about when I'm going to get to the hairdresser. Cars and bike batteries, waxing the Mustang. Uh, dentist checkup reminders and also so I've got a new three sim that goes in my work iPad that I have to have used it for some kind of chargeable event every six months so I've put in there every 170 days remind me to use the three sim that way for me love this app it reminds me because I've got a terrible memory and I've also got a bad um, kind of concept of time so for example actually to be fair if, if you said how long ago to change for bedding I probably got oh, a couple of months but it's, it's not actually that long um, and other things like cut hair I would have said well it's not that long ago but actually it is longer I just I'm just quite bad at, at that kind of thing so most maybe most normal people don't need an app like that and I'm just a bit of an idiot I accept that not a problem rotation quite a new app for me but actually when I sort of heard about it I realized <laughs> I really need this app um, I definitely have done a video of this because it was quite recently but basically, we set a global orientation, in this case, to be forced portrait. And then we can go in by app to give it different rules. So there are some you know, mainly sort of media apps. You know, if I go into Google Play uh, Movies and TV and I start up a, a movie, I don't want it to be, you know, widescreen that way. I want to be able to rotate my phone and have it... So that one, it does have auto rotate. So I find that actually really handy, really useful. Because at the same time, the reason I want the app is usually it's when I'm lying in bed, but it does sometimes happen when at the gym when I kind of throw my phone onto the onto the floor or I'm doing stuff. It rotates the screen when I don't want it to. So I do prefer it generally locked in portrait. But there are certain times or certain apps that I need it to select the auto rotation. Speakerphone EX. I got to think it should be. Uh, this should almost be in stock Android. Um, the main thing is uh, speakerphone options for speakerphone, auto speakerphone on, auto speakerphone off. So basically, if uh, I answer the phone, uh, it, it uses the proximity sensor to detect if I should have the speakerphone on or not. So I can make, I make, I make a call, put the phone to my head, and it will just come through the regular, you know, into my earpiece. And then if I just to throw it onto the table really very quickly, it switches to the speakerphone, and I just carry on. And then when I want to pick it back up again, put to my ear, it cuts back into the earpiece. Really, really handy. Works really well. Highly recommended. I mean, just some other bits and pieces. Oh, I'm not too bothered. And then finally, I'm actually going to do, maybe I should show you the app. Oopsie. Finally, TV show fans. I do love my TV shows, generally sort of American shows. Um, I don't watch a lot of kind of live TV, if you want to call it live. I mean, broadcast TV, I suppose I should say, or when it's broadcasted anyway. Uh, but I do watch a lot of TV, and this helps me keep track of what shows I'm watching. So, for example, The Americans, episode f uh, season four, episode 11 is the next one I need to watch. I can tap Mark Watched, or I can go to the episode to, to double check. Have I seen that one? I don't think I've. I can switch to the previous one. Yeah, I've definitely seen that one. I have ticked that one off. Um, the widget itself is on its to do on my to-do list at the minute so these are the shows i still need to watch i can switch it over to things that i've recently watched actually i've not recently watched them sorry that have been recently been on um and i can switch them over to tv shows that are coming up that i watch um it is quite good as well for you to sort of get recommendations so the top 50 from last week that have people have starred oh preacher never heard of it timeless never heard of it outcast never heard of it wow okay prison break yeah i've heard of it not particularly interested so in fact, what's going on here? This looks like it's... Oh, finally, Game of Thrones. One that I recognise, finally. 800. I, I need to check out Preacher, whatever that is. 
Um, anyway, so yeah, TV show files, I think fantastic app and really do, you know, I use that daily for the to-do list. Uh, I think I covered everything. So those are my essential apps. Maybe uh, let me know in the comments what your essential apps are and why they're essential and how you use them perhaps. Let me know your thoughts on mine, if I'm an idiot or not. Um, but for now, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.